Our reading from the morning is found in the Revelation to John. Hear now these words. Grace to you and peace from him who is and was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and was and is to come, the Almighty. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For our prayer this morning, I want to share uh, a text uh, that has been made a wonderful anthem Uh, Jane Marshall set this ancient Latin text translated into English to an incredible anthem that our choir has done in years past. But let it be our guiding prayer for this morning. My God, I love thee not because I hope for heaven thereby, nor yet because who love thee not must die eternally, Thou, O my Jesus, thou didst me upon the cross embrace, for me didst bear the nails, the nails and spear and manifold disgrace. Why then, why, O blessed Jesus Christ, should I love thee, not love thee well, not for the hope of winning heaven or escaping hell, not with the hope of gaining aught, not seeking a reward, but as thyself hast loved me, O ever-loving Lord, in so I love thee and will love, and in thy praise will sing solely because thou art my God and my eternal King. Amen. I share with you as a scripture to hang on to through this conversation this morning. One you have heard before. One you may have prayed before. It may be among that collection of verses you go to when you have a verse you need to go to. It seems particularly prescient in this time and place. Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. This day is known as Christ the King Sunday or the Reign of Christ Sunday. And there are opportunities aplenty throughout the church, the whole of the church, to recognize that in liturgy, in preached word, in song. And while the church has long held and believed Jesus as Christ, ruler of all, that thread deeply woven into the whole of what makes Christendom what it is. Christ the King Sunday as an observance within the liturgical year is comparatively recent. Sure enough, including what was shared for you as our guiding prayer this morning, that great Jane Marshall anthem, My Eternal King, even Handel would 
give us allusions to Jesus as King, King of kings, Lord of lords, and he shall reign forever and ever. Back in my days as a youth director, when I learned how to play guitar by somebody writing a few chords in a G progression on a napkin and letting me borrow his guitar, we would sing, King Jesus is all, my all in all, and I know he'll answer me when I call. Oh boy. And even right now in some church, some gathering, some contemporary screens all over the place, risers, you think it's a rock concert, there's somebody singing a Jesus is my boyfriend contemporary chorus over and over ad nauseum that will allude to the kingship and reign of Jesus. In 1925, Pope Pius XI instituted the festival of the reign of Christ, 1925, and stuck it originally as the last Sunday in October. 1925 in Europe, think about where that is, what that is, what that means, a time when dictatorships were rising and the influence particularly of Benito Mussolini was growing in Italy and the role of the church was being diminished. So the Holy Father instituted this festival to state the role, the autonomy, and the mission of the church to live out the ways of Jesus in their communities and in themselves. After the Second Vatican Council in the 60s, where there was a profound increase, awareness and appreciation for all that is liturgical, the benefits of which are very much a part of the worship order even of this service, and the growth in ecumenism across the entire Christian landscape, Pope Paul VI made the observance move the observance to serve as a punctuation mark, if you will, on the Christian year, making it the last Sunday of the Christian year before Advent. I always want to pause at Christ the King Sunday or Reign of Christ to help us reflect upon where we are. We sit here in the latter part of November, our minds our hearts, the energy of our work life, our family life is already well into December of all that needs to be done. We, we live by that calendar that tells us when the year ends and when it begins. And yet, for we who are people of faith and are Christian people, particularly who observe the liturgical calendar, have to remind you that this is it. This is the last Sunday of the Christian year. This is it. Next Sunday, it's going to look very different in here. The words we speak will be very different. We'll go from Christ who is the King today to next Sunday beginning to tell forth the story of the one who is to come who would save us from ourselves. It takes a little theological emotional and spiritual imagination and energy to put us in that place. But today, I want you to hear it. This is it. This is the last Sunday of the Christian year. And what then do we say, hold to, believe, cling to? What then matters to us at the last about what this reign of Christ is and shall be? And we hear from the last book of canon, from the Revelation to John, the words that in the ultimacy and fullness of time, it is he who was and is and is to come who reigns. Beyond the mystical thoughts of what that might portend, what in the world does it mean to us here and now? 
No differently, it seems to me, Pope Pius in the 20s needed to make a statement about what the church is and what people of faith are and are not to be about because of the ways in which the church had been diminished in that time, it seems ever appropriate now on Christ the King Sunday not just to sing about Jesus Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, but to live into the truth of that here. For as political leaders and various constituencies of this time and place, invoke the name of Jesus to cover their prejudiced ideologies, there is no more time important than now to claim what the reign of Christ is and is not. Whatever the calculations giving rise to the conflation of immigration, terrorism, and refugees fleeing slaughter, several things come to mind. The first of which is this as previously stated, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. From a geopolitical point of view, sure, you know, say what you want, do what you think you need to do. Any initiative that appeals to the lesser angels of our natures invoking fear as a motivator will ultimately betray the character of this land made up of people who, by the way, all came here from some other place. Or leaders who aspire to the White House and those who currently occupy the State House, including and especially the State House of Tennessee, may be doing what is politically expedient, but it is in no wise leadership. I'm amazed by how quickly the import of Christian faith invoked as the guide for those who aspire to elected office speak of how important their Christian faith is, but then to say that only refugees you'll welcome are those who can prove they are Christian is to disprove any understanding of what being a Christian is. So who are we and what are we to say and do in this moment of great ferment in our world? How are we to claim the reign of Christ in our lives and in our churches and in our communities in the face of that which causes great fear and concern and in many ways ever so rightly so? Is not a moment like this the better sense of how we really say what our faith means to us than when all is well? In the Revelation of John, whatever that book all means, some of which I think I know, a lot of it I don't really care, but I do know this. At the first and at the last, there's Jesus. And I'm okay with that. And in between, there's all of this opportunity to live that life with him. Richard Rohr says, we've turned Christianity into that evacuation plan for the next world. He invokes the term cosmic Christ and says, it reminds us that everything and everyone belongs. We're all unworthy, but the mystery of the incarnation means the divine indwelling is in all of us. We're indeed the body of Christ, God's hope for humanity, he says. And it is that one day we will all recognize that the divine dwelling place is in all of creation. Christ comes again whenever we see that matter and spirit coexist. This truly deserves to be called good news. This Sunday we celebrate 
Christ as king, the ruler of all. Pantocrator. But we do so not in the abstract, but in the manifest ways we carry who he is with us and through us. So this morning, friends, what is the evidence in us that we are partakers of the reign of Christ where love reigns o'er all of us? We've said much these past weeks. And not just these past weeks, but the presence of a table around which all may gather has given us a visual image of what is so purely true about the nature and character of God. And if indeed this place, St. John's, is a place where all may gather, then maybe it is time that we amend our statement of welcome again to include those who seek refuge. For we cannot claim Christ the King as our refuge if our hearts aren't willing to extend it. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.